My name is Bernie Briones, a member of Jesus Reigns International. What do I love about this church? Well, I love this church because they love our Lord Jesus Christ, they love to win souls, and their support system is awesome. 2008, when I was diagnosed with cancer of the uterus, and because my family is in the Philippines, they became my instant family here in the United States. They prayed and encouraged me with the wisdom of God. And um, with that, I, I, I started seeking the Lord with all my heart and just went back to Him. And my relationship with Him had deepened. They helped me grow in my spiritual walk. Then I was able to overcome my fear and that fear was transformed into faith, a lot of faith. They made me realize the joy and peace despite what I was going through during that time. And praise the Lord, I overcame. I'm an overcomer. God changed my heart, really. The enemy meant to harm me, but God turned it around for good. I thank God for JRI family because they became an instrument for me to go back. And my relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ had been restored now, by the, grace, by the grace of God, I'm well. I'm alive and kicking. I'm well because I believe which I hang on to His promise in Jeremiah 30, 17, that He will restore me to health and heal my wounds. And with that, I just want to give God the glory. Friends, it seems like COVID-19 is really scaring us, but we will not be scared because God said that He will never leave nor forsake us. He has us on the palm of his hand. So everything will be all right. This COVID-19 will end and it will go away. By the grace of God, all of us, because all of us will be covered by his blood, by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no reason for us to be scared. Amen. Good morning, America. Good morning, Virginia. Good evening, Philippines, uh, wherever you are. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. The Lord bless you. And uh, praise God. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, today in our Sunday worship service. And, uh, you know, today we are going to have a very interesting topic. And uh, this involves our, actually, our eternal destiny. Amen. So the title of our message for today is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And uh, before we go on, uh, let's uh, have a short prayer. Let's bow our head, let's close our eyes, and uh, let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much, oh God, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your protection. Lord, thank you very much, O oh God. It's only by your grace, Lord, that we are here today, O oh God. And thank you, Lord, for your protection upon each one of us, upon our loved ones, O oh God, from uh, any infection, from any virus, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And even, O oh God, uh, thank you, Lord, for your word that we are going to uh, share today, uh, that we are going to learn today. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you give us wisdom, that you give us understanding, O oh God. And help us, Lord, to listen and to understand and to put into practice what we are going to learn today, O oh God. And also, Lord, I pray, O oh God, for your fresh anointing. Be upon me, O oh God, as I preach your word. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for wisdom, for boldness, O oh God, so that I could preach your word, O oh God. Hallelujah. As you have intended, O oh God, for each one of us, O oh God. Lord, we thank you once again. Holy Spirit, we need you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Our text for today is in Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 to 29. I'm going to read it from the New International Version Bible starting from verse 26 up to 29. Verse 26, The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Disclosed to the Lord's people. Verse 27, To them 
God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. This is the word from Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae, to the, to the Colossian Christians. And once again, the title of our message for today, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Last Sunday was uh, Easter Sunday, also called the Resurrection Sunday. And uh, before we go on with the, the message that we have today, uh, let me just uh, you know, go over Resurrection or Easter Sunday quickly uh, because this is tied up with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, you know, the death, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, if this did not happen, we are hopeless. And because it happened, you know, the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, you know, we have hope. We have hope to spend our eternity with the Lord in heaven. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. By the way, who among you wants to, or who among you want to spend your eternity in heaven? Or who among you wants to go to heaven? If you want to go to heaven with me, and spend your eternity with the Lord Jesus, thumbs up or type amen uh, somewhere at the page of, uh, you know, your, your computer, your, your, your cell phone. So, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to go to heaven. Now, let's go quickly uh, about the meaning of resurrection. What is the meaning of resurrection? It means rising from the dead or coming back to life. That means dead to life. It's the state of having risen from the dead and having an incorruptible body, not subject to death and decay. Let me give you a, a, an illustration. You know, Those who had accepted Jesus Christ, if you had accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, congratulations. Praise God. This message is for you. And to those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is very important also for you. Because Christ, the Lord Jesus, is our only hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The biggest problem in this world at the moment is not COVID-19. It's not recession or the effects of this COVID-19. The biggest problem in this world nowadays is there's a lot of people dying because of COVID-19. And most of these people, they are dying without accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And if a person dies without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you know where he is going. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, the Lord Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's no other way to heaven. There's no other way for us to spend our eternity in the kingdom of God in heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. Those people, there are thousands who are dying every day because of this COVID-19. You know, they may have a good religion. They may have helped a lot of people, 
they may be kind, they may be good. But before they died, before they passed away, they failed to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And the Lord Jesus said, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. He is the only way to heaven. There's no other way. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, while we were having our meeting, we have, we have this teleconference every morning. And uh, my boss just told us, one of our colleagues just passed away because of this COVID-19. Uh, he belongs to the same division that I, that I am, Division of Information Technology. But I work at a different floor. I work at the 12th floor, but that guy uh, work at uh, the seventh floor. So we are quite far away. But when I heard about the news, it's like it's like uh, death from this COVID-19 becomes uh, 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 more real to, to me. So and there's a lot of people just here in the U.S., especially in New York. There's a lot of people. I think thousand, more than a thousand people dying every day because of this COVID-19. And these people, if they failed to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, where, we are, where will they go? Where are they going to go? If there's only one way to heaven, if it's Jesus Christ, and I believe that it's only through Jesus Christ that we can be saved. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can enter heaven. If we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, we will spend our eternity in heaven. Are you with me? Do you agree? Type amen if you agree. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way to heaven. Hallelujah. Now, let's go back to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ was recorded from or in the, the four gospel books. You can see that in Matthew chapter 28. I'm not going to read any of this because uh, of time. You can see that in Mark also, Mark chapter 16. You can see that also in Luke chapter 24 and also in John chapter 20. You know, this is a good time for you to, to read all these chapters. Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John chapter 20. They all talk about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So while you are staying at home, cannot go anywhere, read your Bible. Read these chapters to learn more about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And according to these four Gospels, the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on the third day following his crucifixion. Now, I have here a question. What happens if Christ did not resurrect? What happens if the Lord Jesus did not rise up on the third day after his crucifixion? Well, number one, our preaching is useless. Our faith is useless. My faith, your faith is Useless if Christ did not resurrect. This is what Apostle Paul said if Christ did not resurrect or if Christ's resurrection is not true. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, this is what Apostle Paul said Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. If the Lord Jesus did not resurrect, our preaching is useless, our faith is useless. Number two. If Christ did not resurrect, the apostles, the disciples of the Lord are all false witnesses. And this is what Apostle Paul also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. More than that, we are then found to be false witness about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. So if Christ did not resurrect... Apostle Paul and all the apostles and the disciples of the Lord were all false witnesses. 
Hallelujah. And not only that, all pastors like me, we are all liars also because we are preaching about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We are false witnesses also. Hallelujah. And uh, where do you think liars go? Liars go to hell, right? And the third one, if Christ did not resurrect, we are hopeless sinners. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. These are all in 1 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, by the way. In verse 17, this is what Apostle Paul said, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. It means we have no hope. We are still in our sins. We are unforgiven. We will not be forgiven of our sins. We are hopeless. And it also means we are just wasting our time in our Bible studies, attending to Sunday services like this today, right? Hallelujah. And the last one, number four, if Christ did not resurrect, this is what Apostle Paul said in verse 19, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. Why? It's because, you know, Christians are subject to continuous ridicule and persecution by the unbelievers. In some other countries, they persecute Christians. They even kill and torture Christians, right? And also in some countries where Christians are the minorities, they're not given the privilege of, of uh, good jobs, uh, good salaries, uh, promotions, they're deprived of all these benefits and privileges. Hallelujah. And then, as a Christian, you're persecuted. You, you are the least privileged in, in some other countries. And then when you die, you'll go to the same place as the unbelievers go. That's unfair. Right? That's unfair. Hallelujah. You know, you're, 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 you're following the Lord Jesus. You, you believe that he had resurrected. And then here comes the, the, the fact that the Lord Jesus did not resurrect. And the scripture says we are the most pitiful people on earth. Because we had believed on something that is not true. Hallelujah. And if that is not true, then look at what uh, Apostle Paul said in verse 32. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. This is what he said, if the Lord Jesus did not resurrect. This is what he said. If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. You know, the drunkards uh, know this. Actually, the drunkards, th this is their motto. Uh, they say, let us drink. Let us eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's why sky is the limit for the drunkards. Hallelujah. So that's the bad news. If Christ did not resurrect, then what we're doing is useless. Our faith is useless. We're the most pitiful people on earth. But here is the good news, brothers and sisters. The good news is Christ indeed Resurrect. Christ indeed was, you know, had risen from the dead and he is alive forevermore. The Lord Jesus is alive and he is alive forevermore. Say amen. Type amen if you agree with me. Jesus is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Brothers and sisters, we have the good news. Share the good news to people, especially during this time where. You know, you open uh, the radio, you open your TV, you read the news, it's all bad news, it's all negative news. We have got the good news, share it to people, because this is the only hope of people.
people. This our glorious hope. Christ is our only hope to be saved, to, to go to heaven, to spend our eternity in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And this is the good news that Apostle Paul had, uh, had mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. And Apostle Paul actually had uh, boldly affirmed on this. He was too sure for this, and I'm sure also. And this is what he said. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now, some of you might be thinking of the fallen asleep as just sleeping, you know, sincerely, but... The Apostle Paul uh, was talking about uh, dead, physically dead, falling asleep. Those who died in Christ. You know, those who have died in Christ. Uh, hallelujah. So Christ indeed has been raised from the dead. He is the first one to be raised from the dead among those who have fallen asleep. Because the, the, the next resurrection is for all those who had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they passed away. Say, for example, you know, some of those people who are stricken by this uh, COVID-19, before they pass away, they had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. It's because someone else went to them, shared to them, John 3, 16, John 14, 6, John chapter 3, verse 3, John chapter 3, verse uh, 5. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And they accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior before they passed away. They are qualified for this. They are, they are, they are, they are counted as those who had fallen asleep. And they will be resurrected when the Lord Jesus comes during the rapture of the believers. Hallelujah. So once again, the four gospel books had documented the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John chapter 20. Now, the Lord Jesus is risen and he is alive forevermore. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because Christ is alive and he's alive forevermore. Let us rejoice. Amen. So let us rejoice. Let us, you know, share the good news to people. Amen. Christ is alive forevermore. And if you agree, type amen. Type amen. Hallelujah. Thumbs up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, knowing about the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, what is it to you, right? You might have heard this uh, message so many times already. Because we preach about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus every year. His uh, death, his burial, and his resurrection. We, we preach it every, every year. So you might have known this. So knowing about it, what is it to you? You might have heard it so many times already. Teachings. Hallelujah. But, you know, friends, brothers, and uh, sisters, it's not only about knowing. We should understand the meaning of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus because this is our hope, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. We should understand the importance and the significance of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus because our eternal destiny lies on this truth. Lies on this truth. Our eternal destiny depends on this truth about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the reason Christ is in you, if indeed you had accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he is 
in you. He is in your heart. He dwells in your heart. If you indeed had accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Praise God. That means if you have received Jesus Christ, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that means you have hope. You have hope, brother. You have hope, sister. Hallelujah. And those who are thinking about uh, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'll give you an opportunity uh, later on to receive Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. He is the only way to heaven. He's our only hope, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let us read again uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 to 29. This is uh, actually the, the main, uh, main uh, uh, texts that we have for today. Verse 26, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations. Mystery that was kept for ages and generations. But is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To the Lord's people. What is Lord's people? To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I'll explain this uh, more. Hallelujah. As we go on. Verse 28. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. This is what Apostle Paul said. Truly, the Lord had uh, used Apostle Paul mightily in spreading the good news, in spreading the gospel of uh, the Lord Jesus to all the Gentiles. Hallelujah. And praise God. Because of uh, his preaching of uh, the good news, the good news had reached us Gentiles. And now we believe, we accept, we accepted the Lord Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. And we are now what uh, Apostle Paul had mentioned here as the Lord's people because of Christ. Not because we are good. Not because of what we have done, but because of what the Lord Jesus had done on the, on the cross for us. Hallelujah. Verse 27, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. This is a powerful verse. It says there, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That mystery was Christ in you, who is the hope of glory. In the Old Testament, this was hidden. It was only revealed, God only revealed it when the Lord Jesus came into this world. But people, a lot of people, during that time did not believe in him. They persecuted him. They even hang him on the cross. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Take note on this uh, passage of uh, scriptures. Colossians chap chapter 1, verse uh, 26 to 29. Apostle Paul had written his epistle, or had written this letter to the believers in Colossae to the believers in Christ, to the followers of Christ in Colossae. And he called them the Lord's people in verse 26, which says, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Apostle Paul called them the Lord's people, and these are Gentiles. Hallelujah. The Christians in Colossae, they are Gentiles. They are like you and me, Gentiles. Gentiles, it means, you know, to the Jews, there are only two kinds of people. You are a Jew or you are a Gentile. 
If you are not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. I am not a Jew, so I am I'm a Gentile. You are not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. Hallelujah. And uh, this letter of Apostle Paul was addressed to the believers in Colossae who are Gentiles. And, you know, talking about this, you know, God revealed his glorious plan for the Gentiles. God has had revealed his glorious plan for you and for me and for all those who will believe later on. Hallelujah. This means it's a blessing for us, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, this hope of glory is the fulfillment of God's promise to restore us, to restore people to himself, to save people, to reconcile people to himself. Whether you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, God loves you. God loves all people. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ is the fulfillment of God's promise to save humanity, to save people. Hallelujah, from our sins. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, from the New American Standard Bible, it says there, After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Hallelujah, praise God. You know, this hope, this hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. This hope that we have is not just a hope. It's not just a wistful thought, but a confident, expectant, and joyful knowledge that we are being changed by God from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And then one day we will see Christ face to face in his glory. That's glory, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, having been conformed to, the, to his image. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29, New International Standard Bible, it says there, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. God wants us to be conformed, to be transformed, into the image, into the likeness of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because God wants us, God wants us to spend our eternity, to spend our glory, our glorious days with the glory of the Lord Jesus when that time comes. Hallelujah. Praise God. And also the hope of glory includes the resurrection of the followers of Christ. I'm talking about those who had died already. Those who died, but before they died, they accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. This is what I'm talking about here, the resurrection of the followers of Christ. It means they are already dead, but they died in their faith in the Lord Jesus. They accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior before they died. And this hope of glory includes the resurrection of these followers, dead followers of Christ, or followers of the Lord Jesus who are already dead. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, New, Standard Ameri uh, New American Standard Bible says there, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You know, when you receive Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The Holy Spirit comes to you. He will be with you forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Aleluya. So Christ's resurrection is the guarantee or certainty for those who had accepted the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. You know, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, Christ's resurrection is the guarantee or certainty that if ever we die, if ever we die, we will also resurrect. We will also resurrect the same way that the Lord Jesus had resurrected. We will be given a glorified body like his glorious body. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And that happens, that takes place during the rapture of the believers. There's a teaching about the rapture of the believers, and I'm not going to talk about uh, that, but I'll, I'll read some passages about uh, you know, this rapture of uh, believers. It's, it's not specifically mentioned, that word rapture, but you know, rapture means it's not to be snatched out, quickly taken away. And that happens when the rapture comes. Uh, when the rapture of believers uh, comes. And here are two passages of the scriptures <coughs> that talk about what will happen to the believers when this rapture of the believers will come. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 to 17, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 to 17. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him, those who have died in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, the Lord Jesus is coming again, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord Forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There are two events that will take place during the rapture. Those who have died in Christ will rise first, will resurrect, will be given the, the, their glorified body. And then it says there in, uh, <coughs> in verse 15, we who are still alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord, when the rapture comes tonight, uh, tomorrow, or next week, when the rapture comes and we are still alive, praise God, we will not face death, we will not die, we will just be transformed into glorified bodies, just like the glorified body of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it says there, and after that, we who are still alive and are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We will be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let's pray that the rapture will come very soon. will come, you know, today, tonight, tomorrow. Hallelujah. And we will not face death. We'll just be transformed into glorified bodies. Our bodies will not you know, this physical body cannot enter heaven. This subject to corruption, decay. But God, the Lord, will give us a glorified body. Hallelujah. He will change. Uh, in uh, First Corinthians, this is also what uh, Apostle Paul was saying about the same thing. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 53. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. It means we will not all die, but we will all be changed. 
in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. We need to be changed. This body needs to be changed because this is subject to decay. This is perishable. We need to be imperishable. So the Lord will change us from mortal to immortal bodies, from perishable to imperishable bodies. We'll have glorified bodies, just like what the Lord Jesus Christ had when he had resurrected. Hallelujah. Now, the Apostle Paul was explaining here that not all believers in Christ, those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, not all followers and believers of Christ will die, but all will be changed, will be given the resurrection type bodies or glorified bodies when the rapture comes. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Lord, come. Come very soon. Hallelujah. Praise God. And actually, the Lord Jesus had promised it also. In uh, John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, this is what the Lord Jesus said. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Wow. Those who believe in him, even though they die, he said, will live. And then, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So that means, just like what Apostle Paul had explained, that not all followers and believers of Christ will, will die. But we will all be changed from mortal to immortal bodies, from perishable to imperishable bodies. Because once again, we cannot enter heaven with this physical body. We subject to death and uh, decay. Hallelujah. So praise God. I'm happy. Hallelujah. Christ in us, Christ in you, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ is our only hope, brothers and sisters. Friends, Christ is our only hope. Hallelujah. Christ is our only hope to have that glorious experience with Christ when we meet him, when we see him face to face. Hallelujah. When that rapture of the church will take place, rapture of believers will take place. Hallelujah. So Christ's presence, the presence of Christ in our lives, if we accept him, as our Lord and Savior, that's the hope. That's our hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. It means, brothers and sisters, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, not only as your Savior, but also your Lord. You know what it means by Lord? It means Lord is followed, obeyed. It means you surrender your will, your free will, and to the will of the Lord. It means you obey the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Depend on the Lord. Not on your own uh, understanding. Hallelujah. But trust in the Lord. Depend on him. Hallelujah. And if you have truly accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, praise God, congratulations. Hallelujah. It means you have this glorious hope. It means you have this blessed hope that the Bible is talking about, that the Apostle Paul is talking about. Hallelujah. That means when the rapture comes, you will be included and you will be with the Lord forever. Spend your eternity with the Lord in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. And once again, when that time comes, when the rapture of the believers will come, the dead in Christ will be resurrected. And those who are still alive, those who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they are still alive when the Lord Jesus comes, you will be transformed into glorified bodies. You will not face death. 
Hallelujah. You'll meet the Lord in the air during the rapture and be with him forever. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, friends, what is your response to this truth that we have just heard today? What is your response to our message that Christ in us is the hope of glory, that Christ is our only hope? Hallelujah. For our glorious future, for our glorious life in the kingdom of God. For those who have already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what does it mean to you after listening to this uh, message, to this preaching? Will you be more serious in your personal relationship with the Lord? Will you be sincerely committed unto the Lord in your walk with the Lord? Spend time, quality time with the Lord? Spend more time, quality time with his word? Or you will still be, you know, hallelujah. I do hope and I pray that if you have truly accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you'll become serious from today. You'll become serious in your personal walk with the Lord, in your personal relationship with the Lord, that the more you will seek the Lord, that the more you will seek his will, that the more, that the more you will desire to be more intimate with the Lord, to be closer unto the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. And friends, those who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is my prayer that you will decide today to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, wherever you are, the hand of the Lord is not too short to reach you out. And if you are that person, if you have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you'll be included in, in what uh, the, the word of God is saying, uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. If you are that person, if you want, if you have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray with me with this short prayer. A prayer of acceptance. Accepting the Lord Jesus into your life, into your heart. This is not religion. This is about personal relationship with the Lord. So if you are that person, bow your head, close your eyes, and pray with me with this acceptance prayer, short prayer. Almighty God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace and your mercy upon me. I thank you for your word, for your message that I have heard today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending your one and only Son, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to suffer and die at that cross to pay the penalty of my sins. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me at that cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your unconditional love for me. And starting at this very moment, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I accept you into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the King of my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And help me, Lord, to live for you every day of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for your word that we have just uh, studied today. I thank you, Lord, for all my brothers and my sisters who have joined us in our service today. And most especially, I thank you, Lord, for all those who have accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I believe, we believe, Lord, that for every soul that uh, repents and accepts you as their Lord and Savior, there's rejoicing of angels in heaven. Multitudes of angels are rejoicing. And we rejoice. Hallelujah. We rejoice also, Lord God. And we thank you, God, for touching the lives of people, even those who are going to listen to watch this uh, video, this preaching after, after, after today, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you reach them. I pray, oh God, that you touch them. I pray, oh God, that you enlighten them, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, God. Even, Lord, I pray, oh God, for all of us who are listening, who are watching this, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you extend your hands, your loving arms, oh God, upon each one of us, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you protect us. Protect us, oh God, from this virus that is going around, oh God. Hallelujah. And I pray, oh God, that you give peace, oh God, to everyone, oh God. Hallelujah. To trust and depend on you, God. Hallelujah. Because nothing is too difficult for you, God. Your hands are not too short, oh God, to reach out unto each one of us, O oh God. Hallelujah. To protect us, O oh God. You are our only hope, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, thank you very much, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that you also provide for all the needs of my brothers and my sisters, O oh God. Physical, emotional, and spiritual, O oh God. Hallelujah. Provide for all their needs, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, and your mercy, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And once again, O oh God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and praises. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Stay safe. Stay healthy, physically, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. God bless you all. Amen.